Hi guys, welcome back to Fruitopia. We are um, having a, a beautiful stream of weather whilst um, the rest of the country on the east, eastern side is getting flooded, unfortunately. But that's how it goes, right? When they have their nice weather, we get the crap down here. So it's never perfect anywhere. The, the weather pattern it's continu continuously shifting up and down. So, today I'm making a video as a, a further update to the last two videos I made. I just wanted to point out a couple of things I noticed. This is the um, Paxton Prolific um, Custard Apple or Atemoya. And it's um, getting sizable fruit. Now, the first one that I took off last week which I showed you in a previous video it was black I don't know what happened to it I threw it out and I think this one here might suffer the same problem right I don't know what that what's what's causing that and this big whopper here um, might be all rotten inside I don't know until I take it off it's starting to get the signs those dark signs there see that so I don't know if that's from all the rain we had this year. It was just a wet season and not a good year for custard apples. Um, but I wanted to show you that we've got movement as well. Right? As you can see here. It's moving. With uh, the first flower buds. That came like last week at the beginning of the month. on the um, Paxton Prolific here in Melbourne, Australia. I keep getting asked in, in, in Messenger, where am I? Where am I? Gosh, guys, come on. You should know where I am by now. I'm in Melbourne, Australia. Melbourne, Australia. All right. Um, and here's another one. A nice fatty. The lighting sucks, but let's go around the other way. So we got, we had three big ones. One of them dropped off, as I said, and it was all rotten. And two remain. A regular size um, custard apple. And then we have the little ones, which I don't think are going to go anywhere. Right? Like that one there. See, that's also been affected. See that black center? And that one there. So, and this one here. So we got about 10 altogether, but not very, um, not a very good year. And last year we got nothing. Last year we got nothing on the um, Paxton Prolific. It was, it was the worst year of all. But we are getting something um, this time. So it looks like it's heading back to being a good, a good tree. We'll see. Okay, let's move on. The uh, kumquat, of course, you saw that last time. That's going crazy. And we eat as many of these as we can. This is best for, for uh, jam or marmalade. The first um, white sapotis are almost ready here on the vista. And they have that black thing as well. Look. I've never seen that before on my uh, white sapote. They look like bite marks, which is really weird. Anyway, that's that. So every year is different. It's not going to be a carbon copy every year of uh, plants. We have the apricots um, taking off like over a thousand apricots my favorite um, temperate climate fruit or stone fruit the uh, bl uh, black sapote increased in size just marginally here we go you can see that there so in August in August or in late winter that one there was the size of, of that one and now you can see it's uh, it's gotten a, a little larger right so there has been growth 
down here too. They are growing a little bit and down here. They're getting um, some size. But like I said previously, we're gonna thin these trees out next time. Right, we don't need 40 black sapati, 10 is enough. Yeah, so uh, the red chatuts will be ready, will be turning red at the end of October. Um, <clears throat> there's the uh, the lawn clippings from the mow that we did yesterday, as you can see. This is the second mow that we've done this spring, before our road trip and now after our road trip. The new persimmon trees have woken up and they're loaded. I don't know if I'm going to leave so many fruit on the, on the young tree. These are only one year in the ground. And I'm counting at least... Oh man, at least 20 fruit. <laughs> I don't think so. Hopefully they'll drop off on their own or I'll have to help it. That's the um, Shuruga, the Shuruga, 20th century variety. And that's the um, Nightingale, which is a lot smaller. And I'm going to make sure this doesn't fruit. Because last year I let it set one fruit. And it stunted the, the growth of the tree. Not a good, good idea to let a new tree fruit the first year. But I was just impatient, right? Mr. Patient was impatient. So, the plum trees, the green gauge, and so on have um, woken up, flowered. I'm hoping that they fruit. We haven't had much fruit from this guy in the seven years we've had it. So, if he doesn't fruit this year, I told Kim I'm going to take it out. This is her favorite plum. But we can't be wasting space along here with these trees. That These are all stone fruit. Plum, peach, plum, peach. The donut peach or angel peach or flat peach is severely affected by leaf curl. And I can't get on top of it. I just can't. So we have extreme leaf curl. And then in summer, we get fruit fly. This has been getting fruit fly for 10 years. This, uh, these peaches, all the peaches. The first fruit to get fruit fly was the peach and the um, pepino and now we're getting fruit fly on our oranges yeah on our citrus and also on jujube so it's starting to become a problem fruit fly has finally um, established, established itself in Melbourne waiting for the hicks fancy to to ripen the birds get all these though we have no chance no ch unless I put a net on there. That's the Vernon. The white chatut is going off as well with uh, young berries. And because of the girdling we did last year, I gave it a double girdle, not a single girdle, but two of them. So look at that. All the way around. And I girdled each arm. Each arm. See the three main branches? I girdled all of them. And someone told me I was insane. I was crazy. Really? Well, look at all this new growth. Who's insane now? Huh? Look at all this. For girdling. Girdling the heck out of it. Remember, we're talking about a trunk bigger than a human adult head so there's nothing to worry about guys don't be so uh fearful we lost the carabao or manila mango i took the the cover off yesterday so that's a goner all the way down to the all the way down to the roots it totally died can you believe it this guy, we're talking about him. He's meant to be the most cold tolerant mango in the world. He fried, he's cooked. And that was with a with a frost protection around it. He got cooked. So he didn't live up to his name. 
I'm very disappointed with the Manila mango. I might put a Thai mango there instead soon. The um, Mahach Chanuk. Um, more passion fruit are coming. <coughs> Flowering. Right? We've got a, at least five this week that fell to the ground. Pomelo is going off with with um, buds. This is the Nam Roy. We had one a few days ago. Man, it was so good. So delicious. And there's still like eight of them left on the tree. These are all ripe, ready to eat. But the amount of flowers, wow. I also pruned it. Gave it a hard prune a week ago. Removed certain um, limbs because it was heading out <coughs> out that way and out this way and it's like no 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 we, we want you to go this way up so I had to remove a lot of side branches lemon guava <coughs> is uh, getting its uh, fruit buds or uh, flower buds ready to um, to open Grumi Chama, <clears throat> nothing yet. It's still uh, in the very early stage. There you go. That's where it's at. Still has some time to go. Another month before it starts to flower. November is when everything starts um, flying here. October is the beginning. November is when everything starts popping, like popcorn. November to March is the subtropical period for Melbourne the Glen Mango has just shot its first uh, um, where is it the new growth here there it is there you go first one <coughs> finally I told you guys that in um, October these not only wake up they start moving so by the beginning of November, we'll have flowers on this. Glen. Right? So, guys, um, the back here, uh, as you can see with the banana leaves, <coughs> there's not much damage left because I've removed all the dead leaves from winter and all the green ones are coming. Right? See how green it is in uh, October? So all you got to do is just remove the the brown leaves and you're back back in business okay so we mowed the lawn here too as you can see it's all nice and neat beautiful we had um, Tommy do the tidy up here's our new guest staying with us and uh, he's happy to help me Afrotopia over um, spring and maybe summer we don't know in exchange for um, a room pretty neat deal huh saves my back so that's why um, everything looks nice and clean it did a great job I'm still doing all the pruning of course there's a, a branch that I forgot I haven't done that one so this is basically what winter looks like that's winter and this is spring see the new leaf it's all ripped because of the wind so the new leaves will get damaged because you can't stop the wind even if it's uh, warm and hot <coughs> so um, yeah we tidied up we've been tidying up the last couple of days Kim's been laying out enjoying spring Check out all the flowers on the orange tree. Everything is just going berserk. We still have some pink guavas left. Been eating those. <coughs> eating bananas from the winter bunches that we have in the kitchen. Which you guys haven't seen. We have, a, we have over 200 fingers <coughs> in the kitchen. From winter. Which we're slowly, slowly nibbling on so um, I gotta get to pruning these trees I still haven't done it should have been done in August 
So I'm, I'm, I'm two months behind my uh, chores, spring tidy up. It's a lot of work. But now that we have Tommy here, the pace will accelerate. And we're gonna get all this sugar cane cut out, get some sugar cane juice, right? Gonna remove all that. I'm actually gonna remove the entire plant once we harvest. So this black sapote here can um, breathe. It's got a lot going on here. It's got these bananas. It's got this uh, fuerte avocado. It's got this overhead ice cream bean. So <clears throat> we're gonna begin with removing the sugar cane. So this guy, this guy here. <clears throat> Gee, I should have drank some water before filming. Um, can get some breath. And talking about bananas, the first uh, banana rack or flower is coming for spring. There it is. See that? That guy there in the middle shooting up. So banana season is well and truly back. Beautiful day today as I said. <clears throat> Gorgeous. Temperature mid-spring is 21. I think it says 21, yeah. <clears throat> so, can't ask for more than that. The cherry moya here are still hanging in, or hanging on. <clears throat> They've grown also um, a little incrementally there's a big one down there it's the biggest one <clears throat> there's about 20 of them but like i've said over and over it's not how many there are is how do they taste do they have any sugar we want sugar guys not um quantity Right, we've got a lot of them. It's great, it's, it's just awesome. And I never hand pollinated. This is huge. I just saw this one now, up at the top. That's huge. No hand pollination. And I've got 20 cherry moya. <coughs> big, big size cherry moya. Not, and little ones here. There's some little ones too. And there's more down here. Look at that one. Hang on, let me hold it without knocking it off. Here's my hand. See that? Okay, so um, I'm waiting for the moringa to wake up. It's still sleeping, it's alive, it's all green except for the tip, which is brown. Pinkerton is looking good, but the real test will be in summer. In spring, it always looks nice, the new growth. Um, the longans, the popo, American popo, is flowering. I'm protecting it though from the, the sun, even though I don't have to in spring, I'm, I'm going to protect it anyway because I don't want it to have any reason to suffer like it did the last three summers. The cherry trees have um, fully come back, reawoken and setting little um, fruitlets, flowering still. The other pawpaw, these are unnamed varieties, I don't know what they are. <clears throat> right? Don't ask me, they're, I know they're seedlings. And then over there we have the, the loquats, which are coming really fast. They'll be ready in only, oh gee, the three weeks, beginning of November. There's tons of them. And then we have another banana rack up there, which is ready, but they're much smaller. More pawpaws up, uh, more loquats up there coming. They're the small variety. But they're sweeter than the big than these fat ones. These big fat ones aren't as sweet. 
as those itty bitty ones up there so both varieties are are good <clears throat> so I think that's it guys the lemon tree lemon verbena the tree is waking up coming back pineapple guava um, a lot of plants here that need to go somewhere um, and the new tree altogether that I just picked up the first tree I got from um, dailies this spring I didn't document it it's this one here it's a new it's a new lychee tree they just came in in that little pot down there we'll be talking about that more another time all right guys that's all for now in this quick update as you can see everything is waking up or awake the aman guava is coming to life right still waiting on the Thai guava to wake up it's sleeping oh, sorry over here this one that's the the Lee Jujube um, still nothing from the star fruit which I cracked last week right still early days on that to see if there's gonna be any any change I guess it'll take some time for the tree to react all right guys that's all for now. Persimmon, the full you is fully awake. White sapoti, oranges, avocados, figs, the same, same. Right? All right, guys. I cleaned up the coffee plant, which was severely damaged by the cold in um, winter. The worst winter damage ever on the coffee plant. There you go. There's all the dead growth I got rid of. Look at that. Unbelievable. It copped it. It really copped it bad. So I missed a terrible winter this year. I'm so glad we were fortunate enough to get away to Cairns and um, elsewhere. So there's the worts in full bloom. The, fl the flies germinate the worts, not the bees. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll be bringing another another update on any other changes I see for you guys. And uh, like, subscribe. We want um, more people out there to to know what you can do in a temperate climate oh here's the um, jambulan or java plum or jamun right starting to straighten it straighten itself up oh and the the small leaf jabuticaba it's got new leaves coming and more flowers but still very hard to see them on camera that's it guys, over and out, and there's the, uh, the green sapoti again, thanks guys, bye bye now.